Howdy folks, I'm going to talk to you about needs assessments. Um, we're going to start off by looking at the sustainable design process. So the sustainable design process starts off with a needs assessment and then moves into research, ideation, prototyping, testing, and finally implementation. After implementation, you'll get feedback from the community that will result in a new needs assessment, so it loops back around and iterates. The needs assessment itself has two components, which are empathizing and defining. At the beginning of the needs assessment, you want to just empathize with your partner community and learn about what's bothering them. And then for the defining stage, you want to understand the details of their problems so that you can work on researching and ideating. So what is a needs assessment? A needs assessment is an attempt to understand issues faced by the partner community, priorities of community members, relevant history and culture, context, assets, and what a good solution needs to accomplish. It is not enough to simply go up to a community member and ask what is bothering them, because they might say that the weather is bothering them, and you might think that a solution needs to change the weather, when in reality, if you had asked better questions, you would have found out that they just want an umbrella. A needs assessment is not looking for a solution, making any promises, telling people that their way of life is wrong, or telling people what a solution might look like. Remember that you don't know what a solution is until you get through the next stages of the design process. So why do we need a needs assessment? Well, we're not the experts that we consider ourselves to be. Everything that the community experiences on a day-to-day -day basis informs their understanding of their own problems and water systems. We do not have this information without talking to the community members. They are the real experts and we cannot solve a problem that we don't understand, and it's dangerous and irresponsible to try. A good needs assessment provides the basis for design constraints, project planning, and everything else that goes into a deliverable. So how do we conduct a needs assessment? We do this through interviews and observations with community members, technical testing as needed, generating and refining needs statements and how might we's, another round of interviews, why how laddering, and considering next steps. Remember that throughout this process we are in contact with the community and discussing their needs. A needs assessment is not something this team does, it's something that this team works together on with our partner community. Let's take a closer look at interviews and observations. Interviews are good, but interviewees often lie and they often think that there's a right or wrong answer. For example, community members know that they're supposed to boil water before they drink it in order to kill the pathogens living in the water. They will tell you that that's what they do, even if that's not actually accurate. Also, they sometimes overlook things that they consider common knowledge, like the fact that they do laundry at a piedra. In the United States, we don't do that, so it's not common knowledge to us, but it's so completely normal for them that they wouldn't normally think to mention it. Observations are a lot more work and planning, but they give you more accurate information, and sometimes you can even participate in the task you're observing. However, you have to remember your own personal biases. Just because a task is difficult for you does not mean that it's difficult for someone who does it every single day. Also, observations can sometimes help build trust and legitimacy within the community, which is very important. So, let's take a closer look at generating needs statements. To generate needs statements, you want to categorize data and identify patterns. So you would write every fact of every interview on a sticky note, group the notes into categories, find complaints, assets, habits, and anything else, and then recategorize to find new patterns. This can be repeated as many times as you like, but it should be done at least twice. In the upper right corner there, you can see how the 2019 Nido de Vida needs assessment team worked on this. Then, you want to use patterns to identify needs. You want to frame the needs as opportunities and avoid embedding solutions. For example, how might we ensure community members have clean water is a good needs statement that gets to the core of the issue. But, we need to build a filter for every community member is a bad needs statement because it assumes that every community member needs their own filter, when maybe every household needs their own filter or you could group the households into pods and have them share a filter. You also need to refine your needs statements to make sure it represents the true issue that you're trying to deal with. For example, how might we increase the amount of water livestock can obtain by eating plants? Could be 
better represented as, how might we decrease the amount of water livestock must drink? Now let's take a look at why-how laddering. Why-how laddering is a process used to take one need statement and break it down into many more need statements. So, for example, the need statement, how might we ensure that community members have access to clean water, is too broad to be actionable. It seems intimidating and you can't really do anything with it. But if you break it down into several smaller need statements, like how might community members identify and use clean water sources, or how might community members clean their water, it's much easier to deal with and you can actually move forward in the design process from that. You also want to link statements to their root causes and categorize need statements to understand them better. That way you can move forward in the design process much easier. Here are some photos from the 2019 Nido de Vida Needs Assessment Why How Mapping. Each sticky note was a single needs statement, and the way they overlap describes how they interact with each other on the Why How scale. We also color coded, so every light blue sticky note had to do with community, dark green sticky notes had to do with water access, and so on. This helped us better understand how the needs overlap and interact, which helped us better understand the community as a whole. Another consideration for needs assessments is pruning how might we statements. The 2019 Nido de Vida needs assessment generated well over 200 unique needs statements, and we had to work with Nido de Vida to cut them down based on priority level. You can't skip this step no matter how many or how few needs you identify. It's also important to consider that you can't get good data from bad questions. Your questions need to be open-ended enough that community members can provide meaningful information, but specific enough so that they're actually answering the question you wanted to ask. Also, most steps will overlap, and that's okay. But this is not an exhaustive how-to guide. If you're planning to work on the next Olmedo needs assessment, or a needs assessment in the future, there's a lot more to learn. Finally, before you begin the needs assessment at all, you need to identify stakeholders and how a project might impact them. Remember that anyone who could be impacted by a project is a stakeholder.